today I'm gonna show you how I make a bean spread for my daughter. These are tiny little adzuki beans that, and they're very small, but we let them soak first. We soak them overnight and then we allow them to sprout, which can take one to two days depending the temperature of the uh, of your home uh, but it doesn't take long for them to start sprouting and as soon as you see that little tip that's coming out of the bean those are sprouted enough and what you're going to do is you're going to cook them i cook them with just a little bit of bay leaf maybe a garlic uh, garlic clove uh, and some beautiful allspice berries and those flavors go into the bean and makes it simply delicious so what i do later is if i made a big batch i Simply, as soon as they're cooked, I put them in jars with the hot broth that it was cooked in. And then I close the lid and leave them on the counter till you hear that pop. You're going to hear that pop as soon as they start cooling off and you know your jars are sealed. So, very simple. And what we're going to do is make a nice bean spread for Erica because she can't seem to get enough of this. And what's good about these sprouted beans is that, there's my bay leaf, um, What's good about it is that it's easier for you to digest. No gas. A lot of people say, I can't eat beans because I get too gassy. Well, if you soak and sprout your beans, you will not have that gassy problem. So your best bet is always to soak your beans before you cook them. Soak them for a day, day after. Put them upside down. I put, I'll show you what I use. Here we go. These are the bags of onions, onion bags. Uh, what I do is I don't throw them out. I cut them in squares and I use them like when I'm making sprouts. So I can actually rinse them and then drain them and keep that there and it has a good circulation. These are mung beans that we sprouted and they just keep growing. I've got these in the fridge already, but I do rinse them once in a while and uh, They'll just keep growing in there, so this is fantastic to put in salads. Simply delicious. If you're making a wrap, if you're making a sandwich, you could just pop some on top. But this is what I use when I sprout my beans, what I use to sprout these ones. Onion bag that I just cut up in squares and I have them ready for me for whenever I have to, I have to use it. So very simple. It doesn't take much. So now to this, I'm going to add some salt because I did rinse them out. But I am going to add some salt. So I'm going to start off with half a teaspoon of, of salt. I'm going to put a little bit of hot pepper. And I've got these tiny Thai chilies that I picked up. I have a whole bunch. So I'm going to use only half for now because these are really, really hot. And then if she wants more, I could simply just put a little more for her. But I'm only going to put half. I'm going to put some black pepper to this. Very simple. And we're going to add garlic, of course. And that really depends on you how much garlic you want to use. If you like it garlicky, use more. If you like it less garlicky, use less. So I'm going to use two small ones for now. Because I will put some fried onions on top. There we go. And I'm going to get some olive oil. Not a lot, just a bit for now. I'd say about maybe uh, one to one and a half tablespoon of olive oil. And some beautiful tahini. I am going to use just a regular spoon and I'm going to spoon it in. I've got one, two, three. Yeah, maybe I'll put four. There we go. Four spoons of tahini. I'm still not eating, guys. This stuff is killing me. This food is killing me. I wish I could just dig into it. And I got to wipe, wipe my finger before I do put it in my mouth. Hold on, let me get a napkin. Okay, and I'm going to put this in to get processed. And then I'm going to see if I need extra oil or extra... Um, tahini just by looking at the mixture so I'll be back in a second old wife's tale if you drop if you drop a fork a guy is going to come and visit and if you drop a spoon a girl is going to come and visit 
I dropped the spoon. Nice and thick, but we don't want it too thick. We're going to add some extra oil to this. Behave, Connie. Don't put that in your mouth. Dear Lord. Okay, another tablespoon to go. Um, I'm going to put just a little bit of maple. I always add a little bit of maple to my food because when... Um, it just, I don't know, it just makes everything taste better. I'm going to add a little extra salt and I'm going to add just a drizzle of maple syrup. I call it my magic ingredient. For some reason, that little bit you put just, it does it. I don't know why, but it does it. Okay, dark amber. I only put about a teaspoon, but it will make a difference, I promise you. If you try next time when you make yourself, I can't taste this right now, but you try it before you put the maple and see what it's like when you finally do put the maple. Don't mind my ugly machine. This thing fell so many times. It's being held together with tape. That's looking good. That's pretty good. Yeah, just gonna. Now you taste it and you see if you want a spicy. I know some people like it really spicy. I like it very spicy. Uh, my daughter, she likes the spicy, but if I put too much spice, she's probably gonna go into convulsions because she can't do it. Last time she ate something really spicy, her body went into shock and she was trembling. So I'm not going to make it too hot for her. Um, but this is pretty good. Now this is good if you spread it on celery, if you put it on a cracker, if you dip carrots, cucumber. It's simply, simply delicious. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fry some onions and then I'm going to put it right over the... Um, the dip, the bean dip. And when you have people over, this is good if you're going on a picnic. You could put this in a container and maybe bring some crackers or some, even better than crackers is bring some nice cut uh, veggies, uh, little baby carrots and you could bring cucumber, you could bring peppers and you just dip and enjoy. It's really, really good. When I tell you it's good, it's good. And this is the Azuki the azuki bean really has a nice flavor. And you know what? When you make um, hummus with a chickpea, it has its own taste. When you make it with lentil, it has its own taste. This has its own taste. And I say it's good. It's very good. So I'm just going to put this aside and I'm going to fry up some onions. And then I'm going to put it on top when I am preparing my dish. Now I wanted to show you something, guys. Let me get my napkin for my finger. You know that we've been doing, look, I've got more sauerkraut. I've got a whole bunch of sauerkraut fermenting. This is day four already. And I do burp it. If I could open it. My hands are sore. I've been out all day in the garden. So I do burp it and I do push it down. And if there's extra liquid, it just falls out. That's okay. It's not a problem. But look at those beautiful bubbles. You know what that means? It's fermenting beautifully. So we've been doing a lot of fermented foods. And my daughter has been really, really enjoying it. So if you're making a sauerkraut and you have, I have it on my counter. Uh, do burp it every day and use something like this just to push it in. And let it do its thing. This is already, if you like that nice fresh tasting sauerkraut, this is already ready to be put in the fridge and to be eaten. This is just going to go in and it's going to wait for the other jars to be consumed. And then we have more and I don't have to worry about making it. But we're also looking into something really special. I bought this. Now, if anybody wants to buy it, you have to go to Kim Fat if you're in Montreal, or maybe you can order it online. This is Shanghai Red Bean Curd 
fermented. But I want to make my own. But before I make my own, I says, let me see if Erica's going to enjoy this because she's into the fermented foods now. And it's very good for her because she gets daily probiotics every day. So uh, anyhow, so I says, before I make it, let me buy something for her to try. And we bought this one. Why? Because it had a pretty container. Look at this beautiful container. It's a nice stone container that you can use for something else one day. Maybe put some sauerkraut in it. Or just if you want to throw some herbs. So it was sitting on my counter now for, I'd say, a month. And I'm there, Erica, are you going to try the fermented tofu? And she's like, mm, not today, Ma. Not today, Ma. So one day we sat down together and we decided to do a search on this one that we bought and how people react when they eat it. Well, every one that we saw on fermented tofu, they were gagging, they were vomiting in front of the camera. I looked at Eric and I says, oh God, I guess she's not going to eat this. So I says, I'm going to leave it aside and I'm going to use it. I'm going to try it when I come off my juice fast. So finally, yesterday I looked at her and I says, come on, Erica, are you going to try that? She goes, I'm, fr I'm afraid, Ma, because she saw all those people getting sick. They were throwing up while they were trying it. So I says, I don't want to be rude, but those people look like all they do is eat hamburgers and hot dogs and ketchup. I says, your palate is different. So it's not that we haven't had exotic foods. Yes, we've had. So I said, Erica, you've eaten all kinds of stuff. What's this going to do to you? Just because they don't like it, but you have more of an exotic uh, taste bud. You have more exotic taste buds. I said, just give it a try and then see how you like it. So I did put the bow back, but I did open it for her. Now I'm going to show you, it comes in a cute little bag and it's got a liquid, basically it's some kind of wine I think. Um, it smells like soy sauce to me. I says, Erica, you can do this, you love soy sauce. Well, I opened it up and out, I'm going to show you, because I'm going to open it up for you. My fingers are sore. I've been out all day working in my backyard because my husband works all day and if I don't do it, it's never going to get done. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. It comes in this dark, almost like a wine liquid. There we go. I'm just going to pick up, that looks like a big piece. Okay. Here we go. See how much she's eaten already? This was a whole square. Uh, she went nuts for it. It smells, it smells like cheese and soy sauce. She, oh, sorry. There it is. She says, Ma, why was I so scared? It is so freaking good. It is so good. It's fermented. It's good for you. It's good for your belly. It's good for your heart. It's good for your soul. It's good for everything. And it is simply, simply delicious. She put some on bread. She loved it. She ate it like that. She loved it. It does have a very salty taste to it, but you're not supposed to just sit there and eat a bucket of this. What you're supposed to do is maybe uh, take a piece like this smash it up and toss it in with some cooked vegetables that you make. If you're making some beautiful uh, cauliflower, you just break this up and you mix it in with your cauliflower and you get that nice, almost cheesy, salty cauliflower uh, side or it could be a dinner if you want. But it really, really tastes good. So if anybody is willing, if anybody is willing to try... Uh, fermented tofu, I say don't be afraid to do it. Maybe you won't like it, but at the price of tofu, it really isn't expensive. This one we paid just, sorry, we paid just a little more because it was in a fancy jar. And 
I might even buy the other ones in the glass jars just to see how it is. But I really want to make my own where I am going to cover it in uh, miso paste and let the miso make... Uh, make the miso fermented tofu because fermented foods is very good for us it really is uh, it makes you digest your foods better uh, your stomach doesn't feel as bloated when you eat uh, it's just better for you you putting back some good flora in your stomach and without a good flora in your stomach your body's going to get sick it's going to compromise your immune system and you will get sick so i'm telling you guys if you want to try fermented tofu do not be afraid don't look at those videos where they make you think that god knows what they're eating erica was so afraid this thing was sitting there was a whole month i said erica just try it you know you've eaten stuff that a lot of people would never even dare to eat so just try it and if you don't like it guess what we'll never buy it again the way she hummed after she ate it she was like singing it was like something else that she loved it so if my daughter loved it i know i'm gonna love it so there you go this is the brand that i picked up it's called shanghai red bean curd it comes in a pretty terracotta uh, container and yeah don't be afraid to try it if you don't want to make it yourself i say go out and buy it and don't just sit there because it's very salty it tastes like soy sauce uh, don't just sit there and stuff your face with this because it will be salty for you. But I would say mix some up with foods that you eat, but don't cook it. So wait till your food is cooked and then maybe break this up and make some kind of uh, dressing to put and toss your vegetables in. And I'm sure you're going to love it. So there you go. Here's a recipe with the azuki beans. Really simple, really easy. You've got it in the fridge. If you've got the munchies, pull out a celery stick, scoop it up, some cucumber, delicious. Um, do sprout them first because they're better for your belly. And this is good even if you spread it on bread and then put some tomato and whatever else you want to pack in your sandwich. It's a delicious bread and it's high in protein. So it's very good for you. So there you go, guys. I'm going to fry up some onions and then I'm going to pack those onions on top of my bowl. So I'm going to say thank you, guys. And guess what? I'm going to see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Ross and Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.